All right, in the wake of the season this week, a lot of teams doing a lot of shuffling, a lot of explaining, a lot of uh, thinking, deep thinking, you know, and uh, joining us now, the general manager of the uh, Jets, Mike Tannenbaum. Mr. T, how are you? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, thank you. Uh, Mr. T, let me start with this. I'm sure you've heard this uh, by now. Greg McElroy today on a radio station down in Atlanta had this assessment of your club. Listen up. Obviously, there were some things come out about Santonio Holmes and his issues with some players. But what is the mood right now in the locker room? Well, it's definitely not a fun place to be, I can assure you. It's, it's the first time I've ever been around extremely selfish individuals. And I think that's maybe the nature of the NFL. But there were people within our locker room that didn't care whether we won or lost as long as they got their they really had had good games individually, and that's the disappointing thing. And uh, it's it's going to take a lot to kind of come together next year. And I think the fact that we struggled at times this year really led to a really uh, just corrupt mindset within the locker room. But I think that we're going to regroup, and I know we'll be a better team because of the trials and tribulations this year. Mr. T, serious accusations. What's your thoughts? Sure. Um, you know, as I said, Mike, some of the things that happened this year, you know, they can't happen again. I've talked to a number of players besides Greg McElroy, a number of coaches. Uh, I pride myself on being a good listener, and we're going to fix uh, a lot of these problems. And uh, chemistry was certainly a factor this year. Uh, we haven't denied that. You know, when we put a team together, which is ultimately my responsibility, you need talent, character, and chemistry, and we didn't get it done. We were 8-8, eight and eight, and uh, we're going to go through a comprehensive evaluation and put the proper uh, – place things in place to make sure that these things don't happen again and, and they won't you were accused in a lot of places of uh going for talent and basically not worrying about character with certain guys holmes was one of those guys was he a mistake i i don't think so you know anytime we we sign a player mike you know we thoroughly research him and in san antonio's case you know we based that decision on what he did not only on the field but off the field in 2010 and obviously he won a you know a number of games for us um we knew there were issues during the season, and we, we didn't get it done. We, we thought we had addressed some of them, but we didn't do a good enough job. And obviously that manifested itself, you know, in the huddle, you know, going down the field against Miami, you know, this past Sunday. And we, we have to do a better job. San Antonio has to do a better job, and, and we will. Um, but, you know, any decision we make, we do look at character. We do look at chemistry. I know that's one of Rex's strength. Um, and, we'll, and we'll do a better job of that next year, and can, we'll balance all those factors. Did, well, what must what what was the why did Holmes become so, what was the problem? Why did Holmes become such a problem on this team this year? Well, again, I, I wouldn't just say it was just San Antonio, but obviously that was a factor. And you know, when, when well, you're let's not start. Having... Let's start with him first because on a way out, two of your solid guys, uh, Tomlinson, who's going to the Hall of Fame, and Moore, both said unbelievably th- tough things about Holmes. Uh, really amazingly tough things. Now you have McElroy talking about how guys didn't even care if they won or lost, that they were that selfish, and he called the locker room corrupt. Uh, that's some ugly stuff, and a lot of it has sent it around. And then Holmes quit flat on the team. I don't care what anybody says, quit flat on the team during that game, and he's supposed to be a captain. I mean, that's that's a big problem for a guy making $45 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. And again, Mike, those things can't happen again. And we're going to, you know, put assurances in that that, that it won't. And How do you do that? You know, it, it starts with the little things and communicating. And, and we're going to start this off season with not only San Antonio, but, you know, a lot of the players on offense and, and work proactively with good communication and why San Antonio felt the way he did, you would obviously have to ask him. Um, but I don't think we have a corrupt locker room. I, I know we have a lot of good people and we've won a lot of games with Rex and, and this nucleus and we're going to get the problems fixed. But but with Rex, we've been 28-20 and 20 over the last three regular seasons. We're 4-2 and two in the playoffs and we're proud of that. You're with hanging that, that, your head too much on those games now, Mike. I mean, listen, you're 9-7 and seven one year, 8-8 eight and eight this year. You've never had a, won a division title in three years. There's a lot of teams who have accomplished what you guys have accomplished. You haven't even won a, a, a title game. So, I mean, you guys are now talking too much about those title games, way too much. I mean, it's a, it, they're in the past now. I mean, you know what? You guys just collapsed. You collapsed as badly as the last Mangini team collapsed. I mean, so, I mean, you guys are hanging your hat way too much about two title games you lost, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I'm not hanging my head on anything. I'm just saying that over the last three years, there's been more good than bad, and we have to more good than bad. But you know, you you got a team that people that you guys proclaimed and your coach proclaimed was going to win a Super Bowl this year before the year started and was eight and eight. Yeah, we didn't get it done this year. I'll be the first one to tell you that. It wasn't good enough. Was no, there a lack of discipline on your team this year? I mean, uh, should Holmes have been disciplined when he started shooting his mouth off in the middle of the season? Well, you know, a lot of things that we do as it relates to discipline or, or talking to players are private conversations that, you know, obviously Rex handles on a day-to-day basis. And things that he addressed, some of it got done. And then, obviously, some things didn't, as as we saw on Sunday with San Antonio. Um, and we're going through and we're going back and looking at all the things that happened and taking steps to make sure those things don't happen again. What, in your mind, as you step back now, what went? why was this team that you guys were so confident about in August, why was it so bad in December? You know, that's a great question, Mike. I don't know if there's an easy answer for that, but, but we're looking at it thoroughly. You know, to, to end the, get, the season on a three-game losing streak, you know, I think we gave the ball away too many times. You know, that's just not on offense, obviously. That's on special teams. You know, gave the other teams uh, short fields. We were, we were just a very inconsistent team in, in all three phases, and it showed up, you know, obviously with ending the season on a three-game losing streak. We're sitting there at 8-5, and five, felt like we had corrected some things, and uh, – you know, each of those last three games we had, you know, Philly got away from us obviously early, but, you know, certainly the last two games we, we had our opportunities to win it. We're talking with Mike Tannenbaum. Obviously a tough time for the Jets right now. A little bit to bloom off the rose after two trips to the title game and now a very disappointing third season. In your mind, does your head coach have to change or are you happy with how he goes about doing his business? Well, I, I say this about Rex. Um, Believe it or not, not what you see is what you get all the time. You know, our, our uh, training camp schedule, for example, is Bill Walsh's schedule because he thought that was better than what his dad had. And I think what Rex is is a, is a deep thinker. He He's his harshest critic. And, you know, as he needs to change or tweak things, he will. But, you know, ultimately – he has a great mind for football. He relates well to players, and we like who he is. He'll grow and evolve like we all do in our jobs. And going into his fourth year, I'm sure there'll be uh, areas that he'll change. Does it? Uh, are you are you supportive of all the talk and all the bluster, Mike? Or has it gotten to a point now where you know? People, when they get a lot of guarantees that don't work, uh, and other guys have made a lot of guarantees in this town that didn't work, and, and people just tuned them out. I mean, Patrick Young got to the point where no one even would show up for his guarantees anymore. Uh, has Rex now taken that too far? Has he, made, has he taken that, you know, we're the toughest, we're the baddest, we're the, we're the meanest guys in the world, and we're going to win everything and hide the women and children? Has he taken that to an extreme in your mind, or are you fine with how he's gone about his business? No, I, I say, again, o- over the last three years, how he's handled the media and what he said, you know, I, I really support support from a standpoint that's who he is. And almost all of what he talks about comes back to one fundamental thing, the belief he has in our building, in our players, in our coaches, and the resources we get from Mr. Johnson. So that's really what his – his whole shtick is about it's about what he believes in and how it comes out uh, you know he'll handle the guarantees on his own but that's really who he is and his belief is about our program but i mean do, do they don't bother you with being foolish so, i mean you know the, uh, the, the, the the this connect that i see mike is there's a difference between chasing a championship and and guaranteeing one and you know everyone chases one but very few people guarantee them. He guaranteed them. He keeps guaranteeing them, and now it's three years, and you're going in the other direction. I mean, so when does, when does it's time to maybe take a different tact? Yeah, again, as it relates to what he'll guarantee in the future, I'll let Rex speak for himself. But, you know, at his core, you know, we don't want him to change. You know, Woody and I believe in him, and we want him to be himself. And, and at his core, he's a very confident guy, and that's his belief system in our players and our coaches and the hard work we put in here. And uh, we don't expect that to change. You know, will his approach change a little bit? I'm sure it does. You know, everyone changes a little bit each year. And we're really proud he's our coach. Will you be making changes on your coaching staff? You know, as we said, you know, we, we expect our coaches back. Um, you know, Coach Schottenheimer is interviewing with the Jacksonville Jaguars for the head coaching job. Um, we'll go from there. You know, he's done a lot of good things here. Um, but we expect, uh, you know, our coaches back right now. So you're saying if he doesn't get a head coaching job, he will be the offensive coordinator next year? 
Yes, you know that that, that is what we have said uh, repeatedly. You know, you look at Brian's body of work over six years. He's done a, a good job. I really respect his work ethic and his approach. You know, has every call gone right? No, but not every draft choice I made has gone right as as well, Mike. But he's done it with a few different quarterbacks. Our quarterback is still a young ascending player who's been very inconsistent this year, but we still believe in Mark and we believe in Brian. So you, you, right now you're planning no changes on your coaching staff. Correct. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of talk about Peyton Manning. There's a lot of talk about your quarterback. Will Sanchez, without any question, be your quarterback next year? Is there any chance you would pursue any other quarterback, or will Sanchez be your quarterback next year? Yeah, Mark will be our starter, Mike. With that said, I, I think we will look at that position as a whole from O'Connell, McElroy, Brunel, and, and, and see if there's you know ways to uh, you know improve the depth of that position. I just caught the tail end of what you were talking about before I got on. You know, the the, the depth at quarterback is a critical position, and, you know, and we look at that very closely. Yeah, well, Polian said that's what got him fired was that he didn't have an adequate backup. That the owner was angry with him for not having an adequate backup, and that he didn't. The owner didn't like that they fell completely to no where uh, without I mean they lost one of the greatest players of all time but I mean uh, so I think that's a little short sighted but he said that that's why he was fired Right. And, Mike, what I'll say is, you know, like Ron Wolf, a guy that I admire as much as anybody in this business, he always believed in drafting one every year. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, wisdom in, in doing that. So, you know, that position is one we're going to have to keep looking at. But Sanchez is going to be our starter. You know, on the plus side of things, you know, he created 32 touchdowns. He ran for six, threw for 26. And on the negative, you know, he created 26 turnovers, which is way too many. He had eight loss fumbles and 18 interceptions. And to have sustainable success, you can't turn it over 26 times. So the, the point Point being, you are not going to, under any circumstances, look to replace him. Right. Mark, Mark is our starter, but we would look to, uh, you know, maybe at that position as a whole. Okay. Um, we're talking with Mike Tannenbaum. When you uh, – now, look back and have you say, boy, I wish I didn't get this guy and that guy. I, I don't expect you to throw any of your players under the bus. Did you make any grand miscalculation? You guys were very, very confident about this team. In August, uh, not just you, a lot of people were. Some people thought that you were overrating the team, but you uh, you weren't as confident as your head coach, who p thought you were the best team in the league. But you were confident. Uh, did you make a fatal miscalculation in, in assessing this team this year? You know, I, you know, I just look go back to the inconsistencies. You know, uh, guys like Wayne Hunter, you know, he, he did some really good things for us as, as a first-year starter. You know, he, he probably didn't play as well as Damian Woody did. You know, from day one, um, you know, there's probably some growing pains there. And then certainly on, on the other side of the ball, trying to indoctrinate some, you know, new players uh, into our defense. It, it just, you know, we were a hard team to get a feel for, you know, week to week. You know, when we were at our best, we were hard to beat. And then, you know, there were some games we, you know, I felt like we gave away. Um, but hopefully with, you know, a good offseason program, a lot of these uh, inconsistencies can be addressed. So I don't know if we overrated our talent, but we just have to get more consistent and we can't turn the ball over as much as we did this year. And is there is there anything that you would look back on yourself that you wish you did differently without being a specific, like I'm not asking you to throw a player under the bus, but is there anything specifically that you wish you had back from maybe the start of this year? Uh, or, uh, is there like a decision that you thought about that maybe you had made that you didn't make or one you did make that you wish you had back? You know, it, it's interesting. Maybe the intangible of going to Cortland and, and maybe knowing that not going there, coming out of the lockout, maybe there was a way we could have replaced the chemistry and unity we created there and, and maybe took a harder look at that somehow here in Forum Park. And maybe we couldn't have at the end of the day. But, you know, there's a lot of things that keep me up at night. You know, when, when we don't win, it bothers me. You know, I, I know I have the best job in the world, and, and Woody's a great owner. And, um, you know, we didn't get it done, and it, and it starts with me. So uh, I, I think that's one, Mike, and I'm sure there's a bunch of others. Do you feel that uh, it's been mentioned in a couple of places? Now, I haven't seen players put their names on these, and it always troubles me, but a couple of players saying that maybe all the talk has made the Jets a target. Do you think that that is the case, that it's hard enough to win in this league without people shooting for the Jets because they have become uh, very much an outspoken bunch? Yeah, that'd be hard for me to comment on. I mean, I, I think in, in pro football, Mike, as you well know, you, it's tough every week, and you're going to get teams' best punches, in, in my mind, anyway. So, uh, you know, you would have to ask the players more about that. I mean, but when you take a step back, do you think the stuff that surrounds the Jets, the Jets have become very visible. 
You guys like that. You clearly like it or you wouldn't have Rex doing it. So you've become very visible. You've become very prominent. There's no question. Rex has become one of the bigger stars in the league. There's no question about that. I mean, so and uh, clearly uh, that's been condoned by you and Woody. It's obvious. And and there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's the way you want to go. Rex has become the face uh, really and the heartbeat of this franchise. But he also he also comes with some baggage in that he becomes and the team becomes somewhat of a target. Are you comfortable with that? Sure. 